here we are, uh, the digital photo of an oil painting. It's a small oil painting, and I only needed to take one shot of it. I'm trying to crop it now, but I had a preset on the crops already uh, in there. I had to clear it out so that I could get a freeform crop. And it looks like, as I'm cropping it, it's pretty straight already. I was, I did a good job. So there only needs to be little tweaks here and there along the borders. Uh, you can do that with free transform. I don't do that here. We can I can show you that later. What I do is, since it's just small stuff, I'm going to use the clone brush and go, go through and clean up the edges. Uh, just making sure, just make sure with the clone brush you have it aligned. You know, selecting the right. Like, see, I don't have the right area there. Select the right area to clone it and. Uh, I don't finish that section. I should have finished it, but I'm going to do a little bit up top, along the side, and um, just, you know, generally, as I said, clean up the edges. This file was, uh, this photo of this oil painting was taken with the digital camera, my Rebel um, digital camera, and it is I didn't set the white point on it. I could have set the white point on it to match, say, this is probably a tungsten bulb, so it's very warm. Um, it The camera, it probably did a good job because the camera usually is on auto white point and adjusts for the temperature of your bulbs, you know, because different kinds of light bulbs, fluorescent, color corrected, tungsten, flash, all have different color temperatures, which are rated in kelvins and, you know, numbers of kelvins. And uh, this one is a bit warm, and so I will put, that's what we're going to be fixing. Here, I'm trying to get rid of the dust and scratches. So I ran, I made a, a duplicate of that layer of the background, up, and it's up top, and then I turned it off, and I'm now I'm working on the background layer, and I'm using the dust and scratches filter to uh, get rid of most of all of the dust and scratches that you know I can see on the filter. But it gets rid of, it kind of blurs out your details and your painting and it's not it's not your your initial intent with the painting you know so that's where the top layer comes in where I haven't made that adjustment and I now I'm working on a top layer and I'm erasing down just in spots just where the dust and the scratches are to uh, to get rid of them and uh, you have got to I'll go over the whole painting you know little bit by little bit and if you zoom into areas you can see a lot of little dust and scratches that you might want to, um, you know, when you get it, when you zoom in too far and you're nitpicking all of it, then maybe that's not, maybe you don't need to do it. So um, you you can. So I don't think I stopped my audio recording on that one, but um, we're uh, zoom in, not too far. You get too nitpicky you're just going to erase your whole painting probably so get rid of all the the more apparent dust and scratches specular highlights things that are distracting keep your brush marks and strokes in place and um, it's a little time consuming but it's not horrible and as you'll see when you're done after you know moving around in here over the whole canvas we're going to merge down I just, you know, I um, merged down to do the rest of the color correction, uh, to finish the color correction. And the color correction in this one is going to be with curves and using the three channels in RGB, red, green, and blue. And, uh, and I like, you know, of course, to have one layer. Um, layer masks, uh, you guys are more familiar. I, <laughs> I do it a very old-fashioned way. Maybe it's backwards way, but that's the way I'm comfortable with. At some point, I will learn to catch up on the with layer masks. But now I've merged it down, and now we're going to go into adjusting the curves. This is So this is one way of doing your color adjustments. And I'll try and make another video of color adjusting with uh, selective color. So here's the red channel, and here's your curve. And you click on the curve, and you put a point on it, and you can adjust it. And anywhere you click on that curve, you'll put, well, you can move the, the, the white point, the, the very lightest, take red out or put red into the very light areas. But if you click on the curve like there, then you can move it around to adjust 
those different sections of uh, those little sets, subsets of, of the value ranges in between the points uh, because they also work as anchors. So uh, as you put a point in, it anchors that area. So I didn't do a lot with the red, didn't need a lot. Um, I didn't want to take it out so much as I think that these other channels, uh, what's going on here, by the way, is I'm trying to get rid of a point. I had an extra point showing you to get rid of it, you had to flick it off rather quickly to one to, to a side, one side or another. Uh, sometimes they don't flick right off and you got to do it again and you get this bizarre because it make, takes the curve all the way up there in the extremes and you saw what happened. But So if you've got points that you don't want, flick them off quickly to the side and they'll leave. The green needed a very very subtle curve as well. The blue is where most of the changes came in that we wanted to do which is basically is creating a little bit more of the purples and the neutrals in this that was truer to the painting and the painting's intent. Um, you'll also find that the more subtle curves, the more beautiful, kind of graceful curves, are the ones that are going to be working best for you in your file. The more jagged and weird and extreme you get with your more points and big changes in the curves, you're going to get some strange effects. But as we go, this is the end of this.